Hey guys, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. And today we're going to talk a little bit about limit laws, limits, what they are, and we're going to solve a couple problems for you. And I mean, this is something that you're going to probably have studied in high school, but uh, it's going to crop up a little bit in uh, university calculus, especially calculus one. Uh, it will be part of the first portion of the course. And it's something that you're going to need to be familiar with, okay? So what I've done here, and we don't need to get into too much depth right now. Uh, I'll come back to this when we do solve the problems and we can, we can point out how these limit laws are applied in problems. But this is just generally a chart here and if you want to you know, come back in the video and take a look at this while you're studying or while you're doing uh, problems, feel free. This is just a list of, of how you deal with certain limits when they're in different, uh, different forms, okay? So why don't we start out with the definition of a limit, okay? So the definition of a limit and this is kind of how you write a limit up here in the top left. And what a limit is essentially is it's the value that a function or sequence approaches, okay, as the input or index approaches some value, all right? So what that means is as x approaches a, where a is a constant here, so some number, okay, then the limit of f of x, or the limit of the function, is equal to some value, okay? So as we approach a, whatever a may be, then the limit of f of x is equal to L, which would be also a constant, okay? So now limits can exist and they cannot, and sometimes they don't exist, all right? And what that means is a, a limit, if it approaches uh, from the right and the left side of the function and you get the same limit, okay? So L is the same if you're going from the right or the left side of the function, that means that the limit exists, okay? If the limit if, uh, if you have a function and it, it turns out that the, the function is equal to infinity at some point or it's undefined, then the limit does not exist, okay? And what I've done here is I've just drawn a little bit of a visual diagram for you to explain exactly what that means, okay? And this is what we call one-sided limits, okay? So one-sided limits, okay, are when we approach, the f we have a function, okay, and I've, I've just written two functions down here. And when we approach some point from the left and some point from the right, okay, the limits must be equal, okay? So if we have some discontinuity in the function at some point, at that point, the, the limit is going to be two different values when we come from the left or the right. So let, let me just show you graphically, all right? So here, and we'll call this number one and this number two, okay? So at number one function, all right, we have a discontinuity. And you see these little circles here, these little uh, hollow circles? That's how you show that the, there's a discontinuity in the function, okay? That the function is not just a continuous straight line, but it kind of jumps, all right? And if we were to evaluate this limit at x approaches two from the left and from the right, okay? So if we approach this function here, uh, sorry, from, uh, as x approaches 2, okay, so as x approaches 2 from the left, okay, of f of x, we'll just say, we don't know what function that is, we'll just use f of x, okay, when we get to 2 here, okay, we're going to find that the limit, all right, is equal to 3, all right, so our y value, our f of x is equal to 3, okay, however, when we take the limit from the right side, so we're coming from the right now of this function, and we get to 2, or x equals 2, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get that our y value is equal to negative 1, okay? And 3 is not equal to negative 1, so this limit does not exist, okay? However, if we come over here and we, we do exactly the same thing and we say we approach as x approaches 2 from the left, okay, we're coming here and we get to 2, all right, we'll say that that is uh, roughly equal to one, okay? Because there's the y value, there's one. And similarly, we will come from the right, okay? And we get exactly the same value here, okay? That is also equal to one, okay? So because we got the same values, and this is a nice continuous function here, okay? We say that the, the function exists and that the limit uh, as x approaches 2 is equal to, of f of x is equal to 1, okay? So that limit exists. All right, so with that being said, let's take a look at uh, two problems, all right? 
and we're going to use these limit laws uh, to, to evaluate these two problems. So let's take a look at a couple problems and instead of just going through each one of these, which is boring and you don't want to see, uh, the ones that we do use, we'll, we'll just talk about a little bit, okay? So right here, I'll put this in front of you here and I've written down two problems for us to solve using limit laws, okay? And the question asks us to evaluate the following limits. All right, so let's do that. All right, and as we usually do, let's just give this a yellow border so we know that this is our problem. Okay, so look at the first one, all right? We have the limit as x approaches five, okay, from two x squared, or of two x squared minus three x plus four, okay? So, well, which laws do we need to use to evaluate this, all right? Um, let's take a look. So, if we go back to the original limit law page, okay, we, we see here that we have, okay, well we have 2x squared minus 3x, okay, and we have 3x plus 4, okay, and if we look at limit laws 1 and 2, we can see that these laws apply, right, and that we can take the limit as x approaches a, and we can distribute it to both functions, okay, so let's go ahead and start with that, now, that actually, yeah, will just be our first step, so this is equal to the limit as x approaches 5, of 2x squared minus the limit as x approaches 5 of 3x plus the limit as x approaches 5 of 4. Okay? It's pretty simple. Now, I know, I know you might be thinking that, okay, oh, it's so tedious, do I have to write out limit as x approaches 5 every time? And the answer to that is most likely yes, you do need to do that. Uh, your teacher does want to see you keep writing limit over and over and over again in this part of the section and don't worry this stuff goes away uh, as soon as you get to the later parts of this section in calculus 2 but for now always write the limit as x approaches 5 so that we don't lose marks okay so moving on all right we've done that now we need to go ahead and look back at our limit laws and see if any more of these limit laws apply and we can make our lives easier and as we can see they do okay so if we look at uh, law 3 here, we see that if we have a constant times a function, the limit as x approaches a of a constant times a function, okay, we can take that constant, we can move it outside and evaluate the limit uh, of x approaches a of the function, okay? So as we can see here, we have two functions here uh, with constants in front of them. So let's take those constants and we'll move them outside of the limit, okay? And uh, I'm just going to come down here for that. So we have, we're going to take that 2 and we're going to move it outside, okay? Is equals to the limit as x approaches 5 of x squared minus, and we're going to take that 3, we're going to move it outside, same thing. And there's no, 4 is just a constant here, so we're just going to leave that like that, okay? Perfect. So that's where we're at now, okay? And now let's take a look back to the limit laws, all right? And we're just going to go ahead and finally solve this problem, okay? So if we take a look at laws 7, 8, and 9, okay? We have the limit as uh, x approaches a of a constant, okay, is just equal to the constant, so that would apply to this one here, all right? We have limit of x approaches 5, uh, uh, or the limit of 4 as x approaches 5. The limit of a constant is just the constant, okay? So that's just going to be 4. Let's take a look at uh, limit law 8, all right? And we have the limit as x approaches a of just x by itself is equal to a, right? And that makes sense because x is approaching a and there's just x, there's no constant or anything like that. And well, that looks like this law here, this, this uh, term here, so that applies to law eight. And finally, we have law nine, okay? And law nine is limit as x approaches a of x to the n equals a to the n, okay? And that is this term here, all right? So using laws seven, eight, and nine, all right? Let's go back and let's just start, okay? So what we discussed before, we'll take this constant, okay? And as we can see here, all right, we're just going to plug in five in for x, all right? So we have five squared, okay? And then we have still have that constant there. And we have this one here that we just discussed. So we just plug in five for x, right? And then we have just the constant, right? Okay, so that's that. All we need to do is just go ahead and work that out. You know, you can just, do it in your heads or do it on your own. 
I'm gonna write down the answer for you here just so you have it. All right, so that is equal to 39, okay? So the, the limit is equal to 39 as x approaches five of this polynomial here, okay? Nice and simple. Let's move on to the one below, okay? And this one's a little bit trickier, okay? Because as you can see, if we plug in uh, x equals or x equals two, we just plug it into this function. Uh, we're going to see that we're dividing by zero here, okay? And un unfortunately, we you know we can't do that. So let's go ahead and we'll we'll start to use the limit laws actually in this one to go ahead and and, and solve it now. If we want to take a look at limit law five, okay, we can see that the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of x, f of x over the limit as x approaches a of, of g of x, okay? But there's a condition here and it says that if the limit uh, as x approaches a of g of x is not equal to zero, okay? So what we're gonna do, just to make sure that the denominator is not equal to zero, is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna break down the top and the bottom using the different limit laws. And we'll do this one a little bit quicker, okay? So we're, we can say that this is the limit as x approaches negative two of x cubed plus two x squared minus one over the limit as x approaches negative two of five minus three x, okay? So we just applied the limit to the top and the bottom using rule five, okay? And now we're going to use the other laws that we did in the, in the earlier question, okay? So we're going to use law one because we have uh, an addition and a subtraction here, law one and two, okay? We have uh, x to the power, okay? And that is going to be our uh, law nine, all right? We have uh, law three here because we have a constant and that's pretty much it. It's the same as the last question. So I'm just gonna do this one pretty quickly for you. So we have the the limit as, draw an arrow down here, the limit as x appro equals, approaches negative two of x cubed, okay, plus, and we're gonna move that constant two outside, all right, which is negative two of x squared, okay, and then we have minus uh, the limit as x approaches negative two of negative one, we have the limit plus the limit as x approaches negative two uh, of negative one. So you can take that negative and we can just move that over here. Okay. And that is all divided by, okay, the limit as x approaches negative two of five, that's just a constant, minus, take that constant out of the x there and put it in front, x approaches negative two of x. Okay, and all we have to do here is just start plugging in, okay? So let's plug in uh, the negative two into here, okay? Using, just using the limit laws that we discussed earlier, all right? And that is negative two to the power of three, okay? Plus two power of negative two squared, okay? Minus one, okay, over and then we have just a constant, all right, minus three times negative two, okay? And if we go ahead and bring that over here and just evaluate it, all right, just put that into your brains and, and just do it by in your head or write it out, whichever one you prefer, we are going to get that the limit is equal to negative one over 11, okay? And that's the limit. So I know that's a little bit of a long-winded topic and uh, you know you have to write out limit all the time and for each term and it can get a little bit confusing, but this, this section is really easy and this should be something that you get 100% on in your midterm if you practice it, okay? So take these, take a look at them. Uh, next video, we'll, we'll do one more slightly trickier problem and then go to your book and just practice, practice. Take a look at these limit laws again. Be familiar with them, they're not difficult. They're, they're very intuitive if you get to know them and apply them to different questions, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more.